Hey guys, my name is Minas and today we're going to be talking about the embryological development of the GIT and today's video will have a focus on the foregut so that's development of the esophagus, stomach and the upper part of the duodenum and as usual I've broken it down so that anyone who is new to embryology should understand what's going on by the end of this video and we're going to begin at the beginning at the blastula. The blastula is a ball of cells that's the result of fertilization where a sperm fertilizes an egg. That ball of cells travels down the uterine tube into the uterine canal, implants into the uterine wall and a process of gastrulation will form three germ layers. And these three germ layers are an oversimplification for this. And this and all of these are a cross section. So if I am the fetus, we're going to cut it this way and look at it down or up. But again, these are sections through the fetus looking at them from the up or the down. So what, what do they make up? So when they're the three layers, they look like something like this, like a flat pancake. And the ectoderm would be the outer layer of that pancake, of that three layer pancake. And that will become the central nervous system and the skin. The mesoderm, the middle part, is your, pretty much your insides. So it's, and it has three parts the paraxial mesoderm, which are muscles or somites, the intermediate mesoderm, which becomes gonads and kidneys, and then, relevant to this video, we have lateral plates mesoderm. So there's two lateral plates, the uh, parietal lateral plate, otherwise known as a somatic, or the splanchnic, also known as the visceral, and this kind of gives away what, it, what they become. So the parietal mesoderm, the parietal lateral plate will become the parietal peritoneum and the visceral lateral plate will become the visceral peritoneum. So that's easy. you already have one point to write down on your piece of paper. And lastly, the endoderm, that's going to be the GIT, the epithelium of the GIT. So relevant to this video, the endoderm will contribute the epithelium of the GIT and the parenchyma. And the mesoderm, will, the visceral mesoderm, namely, will contribute to the stroma, the connective tissue, and the muscles of the gut wall. Okay, now, let's only focus on these. So that's, this is one, two, three. It's three moments in time. It might look very complicated, but let's break it down. So again, it's a cut section of the fetus here. And so what happens, if we look at back at this simple one, this pretty much folds like this. Pretty much folds in like this. So then... As that folding happens, the ectoderm pinches off, forming a neural tube. That's going to be your central nervous system, leaving the outside, the blue, which is the skin, very simply. The mesoderm, if we look, these are the lateral plates here. That's the visceral and that's the parietal. So the lateral plates open up and the endoderm, we see it as being two main parts initially which is the future GIT and the yolk sac. And the yolk sac is pretty much the initial nutrition that the embryo gets. So eventually that pinches off around the same time that the neural tube pinches off. And now we have a lumen. So we're looking, cutting it here, looking at it this way, this way. And around week four, we'll see we have the neural tube here. We have the GIT here. The GIT connected to the dorsal mesentery and this is the intraembryonic cavity. Okay, that's all you need to know with thinking and talking about these videos. Uh, sorry, with these uh, pictures. Now, let's focus just on here, where this one was a cross section. This one is a section this way and looking this way. If I'm the fetus and I'm facing this way, cut me in half like that and look this way. And then we have this, that's in week four. So around the same time as here. So this would be a section, let's just say, through, let's just say through here, okay? Now, the primitive gut, four segments. You probably heard of the three segments, which are the foregut, midgut, and hindgut. Like to add in an extra one, which is the pharyngeal gut, which is pretty much from the mouth or the oropharyngeal membrane to the respiratory diverticulum, which is here in blue. So the first segment of the, of the GIT is the pharynx. And if you want to know more about that, you can look at my video on the embryology of the pharyngeal um, arches and also of the lungs, which explain the fate of this respiratory diverticulum. 
But for this video, we're focusing on just the foregut, which is the esophagus, the stomach, and the first, the proximal part of the duodenum, the proximal duodenum. Okay, so the foregut goes from the below the pharynx, so from the respiratory diverticulum to the liver outgrowth, just for purposes of this video. And in next videos, we're going to talk about the midgut and the hindgut. Okay, but just for revision, the midgut is from the end of the foregut, which we just described from the proximal duodenum, all the way until the junction of the right two thirds of the transverse colon to the left one third of the transverse colon. And then the hindgut is all the way from the rest of it, all the way to the cloacal membrane. Okay, back to foregut. Now let's talk about esophagus. The esophagus is initially very short and we pretty much talk, spoke about how it develops. It's exactly in this manner. It just pinches off and becomes a lumen. If you want to know more about that, watch the respiratory, watch the embryology of the lungs video because the trachea actually comes off the endoderm and pinches off the esophagus. And then there are some anomalies that can happen. So I recommend you watching that video if you want to get a bit more idea of that. But essentially what happens with the esophagus is that it starts off short, but it elongates as the heart and the lungs grow and descend. So the esophagus is actually very short at week four, rapidly lengthens as the heart and lungs grow and descend. And the esophagus is made out of muscle. The upper two thirds is striated muscle and it's innervated by the vagus nerve and the lower two thirds are, uh, sorry, the lower third, excuse me, is, is smooth muscle and it's innervated by splanchnic nerve. And these muscles are from the splanchnic mesoderm. So from the visceral mesoderm, like we, we already mentioned. Okay, and that's all there is to esophagus embryology for this video. Let's move on to stomach. Okay, so focusing here for stomach development. Now, I have a very easy way to remember how the stomach rotates and grows so that you can easily just write it out in your exam and probably even laugh at the same time. So we're going to liken the stomach to Nicki Minaj, okay? So the stomach initially standing right in front of you here, let's just assume there is a longitudinal axis and then an anteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteroposteropos
this stomach rotation is that this causes a lot of other things to happen inside um, the abdomen, okay? I'm sure that you guys have seen these in your textbooks and wondered, what am I looking at? I remember when I first started learning this, I saw this in textbooks and you may as well have been trying to teach a rock to swim. I just didn't get it. But I've drawn them here and I'm going to break it down. You will all, you will all understand this now. This again is a cross section here. In orange, we have stomach. So what happens is that initially, remember how we talked about the stomach rotates? This rotation actually causes the, as it rotates, it causes the dorsal mesogastrum to actually get pulled and this will cause the development of an omental bursa, which is also known as a lesser peritoneal sac. Okay, let's stop there, break it down. This is a cross section here. Looking at it this way. Okay, looking at it this way now. Okay. As the stomach rotates 90 degrees, so this stomach is rotating 90 degrees this way. So this was the, initially the front. And this is the back, right? So Nicki Minaj is moving, wants to move 90 degrees. So that now the back is on the left side and the front is on the right side. Okay, as this happens, it pulls the dorsal mesogastrium with it. This forms an omental bursa or a lesser peritoneal sac. And it also pulls the lesser omentum with it to the right. So you'll notice the lesser omentum moving to the right. This being the dorsal mesogastrium, this is the ventral mesogastrium. So what comes from the ventral mesogastrium is the lesser omentum and the fal falciform ligament. And the falciform ligament initially houses the umbilical artery, but at birth it becomes the round ligament. Okay, again, this is the stomach, like this. We spin at 90 degrees. So remember, when you're looking at textbooks, Nicki Minaj is spinning 90 degrees, pulling the dorsal mesogastrium with her. Okay. So, again, stomach rotating this way, clockwise. And it pulls the, meso the mesogastrium both with it. Okay. So let's have a look at it now. If we cut it this way and look this way, just to see what happens with the greater omentum. We already spoke about the lesser omentum. It gets pulled with the rotation of the stomach and it connects the liver to the stomach and the du duodenum. With the, um, with the greater omentum, uh, let's just label this really quickly. Stomach, that's the greater omentum. The duodenum, the transverse colon, small intestine, we're cutting it like this and looking at it this way. The greater omentum actually grows and it bulges down, forming a double layered sac and it covers the transverse colon and the small intestines. The greater omentum comes from the dorsal mesogastrium. So as the stomach rotates, remember we're rotating 90 degrees, along the longitudinal axis and then anterior posterior rotation. As that happens, the greater omentum bulges down from the dorsal mesogastrium. So greater omentum from dorsal mesogastrium. Okay, so the lesser omentum again, it connects the duodenum and stomach to the duodenum and the stomach to the liver. So if we go a bit lower from here, it'll be duodenum. And the lesser omentum, high yield point, actually contains the portal triad. And that consists of the hepatic artery, the bile duct, and the portal vein. So the free margin of the lesser omentum for extra points, low yield, will form the roof of the foramen of Winslow. And that's the opening connecting the lesser sac to the greater sac, so the rest of the peritoneal cavity. Finally, let's talk about the duodenum, just the proximal part. So the duodenum 
if we have a look at it, again, it's a cross section over here. The duodenum rotates with the pancreas. Initially, it's in the midline, but then it will become retroperitoneal structure. Okay, so it rotates clockwise. The pancreas comes and has its final position on the left side. And finally, they rest in the retroperitoneal place. And so the stomach rotates. Of course, it brings the duodenum with it. Okay, the duodenal, the duodenum actually will form a C-shaped loop. If we look at it this way, there's no drawing, but it will form a C-shaped loop because of the rotation of the stomach. And so the duodenum ends up swinging to the right and sits in, uh, against the body wall and becomes a retroperitoneal organ. That's just the proximal part of the duodenum and the head of the pancreas. If you want to know more about pancreas embryology, you can look up my embryology of the pancreas video. I have one. From week seven, from, from week five to week eight, the duodenum will actually will become solid. It will be filled with proliferated cells from the wall, but eventually by week eight, it'll recanalize, which means these cells will eventually be degenerated and it'll form a patent lumen. And so, talking about the blood supply of the duodenum, we know that foregut is from celiac artery and midgut gets its blood from superior mesenteric artery. Since the duodenum is made up of both foregut and midgut, it gets its blood supply from both. And again, if we were just going to look at this one, since these are more generally difficult to understand, even if you watch the animations on YouTube where you see them all morphing and stuff. Let's just look at it as step one and step two. The stomach rotates. Now, when you look at those animations, you'll see that this rotating like this and you'll know that the stomach is actually rotating like this. Nicki Minaj is turning right, causing everything to move. And it's not difficult to understand that the dorsal mesogastrium gets pulled with the stomach and the lesser omentum also gets pulled by the rotation of the stomach. And so this isn't the complete fetus. We also have, if, if I had done a complete drawing, there would be neural tube and things like this. Kidneys are up here. And, but it's just a half drawing to just focus on what happens to the stomach and and the uh, connective tissue around it. So again, the pancreas, kidney, this is the spleen, stomach and liver. The stomach rotates, causing this lesser sac to develop. And that's the end of the video. I hope that everyone now understands the embryology of the foregut and will never forget it. Uh, thanks for watching.